What do you say after that? I heard a story today. There were three guys, <clears throat> and they, uh, they are hiking, and they, they get to this river. And it's a pretty wide river, and it's, it's rolling fast. Things, things are moving. And so uh, the first guy kind of steps to the edge and he uh, says to the universe, um, give me strength to get across this river. Poof. Guy feels a little different, dives in, and is able with this newfound strength from the universe to swim across the river. Second guy goes, oh, shoot. Gets to the edge and he goes, okay, universe. I declare and decree that I have strength and tools to get across this river. Boom! You can feel his muscles getting bigger, and all of a sudden in front of him is a boat. He gets to the boat, across the river. Third guy steps up, kind of looks around, says, universe, I declare, I decree, I know right here, right now, that I have the strength, the tools, and the intelligence to get across this river. Poof! All of a sudden, he's a woman. He takes out a map, and he walks down 200 yards, crosses the bridge, and gets to the other side. Yeah. So the... the the title of my talk is when, go <laughs> when Going Backward is Going Forward. Now, before the grammar police come out, I looked it up. Backwards and forwards is, is the British way to say it. The American English way to say it is get backward and forward. So let's get that out of the way right now. <laughs> so when backward... Um, is going forward. So that kind of made me think, well, maybe I should, like in some movies, um, start my talk by the end of the talk. So here's the end of the talk. You are powerful, capable, always at choice, open and ready, operating at the speed of the divine. That's it. That's what we're leading up to. Now, you might, wanna, you might wonder what is the paradox in this that I'm writing going backwards to go forward. Now, there's a psychotherapy concept, and this is in French, so give me a second. As reculer pour milieu sauter, which means going backward to be able to leap forward. Mm. So, <laughs> the ones who have um, studied this know this. The process of going backward to your beginning, beginnings, whether you do it on your own, in a support group, with a therapist, with a practitioner, with any sort of counselor or healer, um, can, in effect, give you a running start when you need or are required to go forward again. Now, when do we do that successfully? We all do that successfully. Um, when we use palindromes, you know what palindromes are? Palindromes are when a word is spelled the same way forwards, like you usually read it, as in backwards, like the word uh, race car, um, the word civic. Kayak is the same, backwards or forwards. Uh, Mune is the same, radar. Sagas, solos. Tenet is the same, backwards as forward. And the word wow is the same, and mom, backwards mom. and forwards. And <laughs> Another way you do this is through grief. Now, um, when we're grieving, um, especially for a, a person and sometimes for, uh, for our, our animal people, um, we, we have a memorial or a life celebration of some sort, and that's full of memories. And those memories add to our grieving process and actually push us forward through the process. Um, gratitude is a way to go uh, forward by going backwards, because gratitude is, is actually talking about a past experience. Because as soon as you're grateful for something, you're not in the now anymore. You're already past it. So there's many ways we we do this. Now, in the process, you step into when you go backwards to go forwards. Was explained to me by, in, a, in a blog I was reading by a gentleman named Friar Richard Rohr. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, have you read his stuff? Oh, yeah. He's favorites. from uh, New Mexico, I believe. He, yes. He's in New Mexico, sure. and his he's at the Center for Action and Contemplation. Mm -hmm. It's a meditation blog, and this is from um, his blog entitled Living on the Edge. And he's talking about liminal space. Mm -hmm. Let me explain what that, let him explain what that is. Liminal space, which is from the Latin limen for threshold, is an inner state and sometimes an outer situation where we can begin to think and act in genuinely new ways. It is when we are betwixt and between having left one room or stage of life, but not yet entered the next. Mm -hmm. We <laughs> often enter liminal space when our former way of being is challenged or changed. Perhaps when we lose a job or a loved one during illness, engagement, or at the birth of a child. During this graced time, we are not certain or in control. This openness allows room for something genuinely new to happen. We are empty and receptive, an erased tablet waiting for new words. Mm. Liminal space is where we are most teachable. Mm. So I want to give you a few literary <laughs> examples of, of uh, characters being in liminal space. Um, the time between the murder of Bruce Wayne's parents and when he finally becomes Batman. Batman. Yes. In Star Wars, when Luke Skywalker um, goes to the uh, planet of uh, Dagobah and meets Yoda, there is that apprenticeship there. That is his liminal space. It's in a swamp, which is probably not the best place, but it happened good for him. Um, for those who are very literary in Pride and Prejudice, because I know you've all read that in junior high, between Elizabeth Bennett's realization that she likes Mr. Darcy and the moment she agrees to marry him, that is liminal space and also the entire novel. <laughs> um, that is where we transform liminal space. It's, sometimes it's radical, sometimes it's not, but we reveal and we reorganize our thoughts, feelings, and beliefs about things or maybe just one thing or, or idea, and thus our actions and our uh, perspective and our then, of course, our experiences change after that. It's a rite of passage, liminal space, like going off to college, um, having a bar mitzvah is a big liminal space for um, little, little 13 year old, 12, 13 year old Jewish boys and girls. I had a bar mitzvah. It was quite the big liminal space, even though there was four years of education to get to that 45 minutes, half, 45 minutes an hour of a, of a, of a, um, of a uh, ceremony. Um, it took four years of learning Hebrew and then learning the songs and da, 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 da. And in the old days, when you went to the bar mitzvah, that was a, that represented, this ritual represented that now as you are an adult, in the religion. So you had certain rights. Nobody pays attention to that anymore. Maybe in Israel, I'm not sure. But um, that's a rite of passage where you are getting into liminal space. My, when I moved in with, with, with PJ, with Peach, that's a liminal space um, because, you know, there was her stuff and my stuff and what was going to stay, what was going to go in storage, what was going to um, get lost, um, the closet space. <laughs> Which I got nothing. Um, <laughs> so some, I got a drawer. So, so after five years, now I have two drawers. No. Um, so some are daunting challenges, and some are seemingly destructive and chaotic. At least at the time, sometimes you're heartbroken. Sometimes you feel lost. Sometimes you feel like you got to start over. But a lot of times you're like, now what? Now what do I do? It feels like. I feel like I am doing life backwards in heels. <laughs> <laughs> That's the shoes. Backwards in heels. Do you, do you remember that, um, that phrase, backwards in heels? It's extra difficult for men, of course. But that phrase originated in 1982. 
Frank and Ernest cartoon. Uh, I've never seen a Frank and Ernest cartoon, um, which, which is written by Robert Thaves. He was talking about Ginger Rogers. Oh, and he said, oh, sure, right. he was talking about Fred Astaire, actually. And he said, sure, he was great, meaning Fred Astaire, but don't forget that Ginger Rogers did everything he did backwards and in heels. <laughs> So who's felt that way? Anybody felt that way mm. in life? Mm -hmm. Where you feel like, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. where you feel like you're going backwards in heels. Now, most of the time, we don't, won't do it with the grace, ease, and talent of of uh, Ginger Rogers, but it's a necessary negative sometimes mm -hmm. for us to do. Mm. But not all the time. There's a story about a yoga teacher. And she was telling her students, you know, some yoga te teachers actually inspire. They don't just, you know, put you in positions. And she was saying, sometimes you feel as though you are riding the bicycle backwards. You feel like you are backtracking and heading in the wrong direction. But what really is happening is contraction and release. Mm. The universe is preparing you for something much greater, and like a slingshot, it's going to shoot you forward. You just have to move backwards for a little bit. So in, in some ways, it's a spiritual practice. It's kind of the idea of you close the door and you open the window, right? So let me go back to one of the things um, uh, Friar Rohr said, we often enter liminal space when our former way of being is challenged or changed. Like Heather was talking about as she um, moved in her journey from where she was, um, where she was brought up religiously, and what she f was feeling was right for her now. And I won't tell you the story, I'll tell you the story, mm -hmm. but it's a great story and a great journey. And you're still on it to some extent. We all are. <laughs> Transformation is about decision. Decision to stay in the dark or step into the light. Back to um, Friar Rohr. He said, remember, during this graced time, we are not certain or in control. This openness allows room for something genuinely new to happen. Happen. We are empty and receptive, an erased tablet waiting for new words. Liminal space is where we are most teachable. You know, sometimes we sit in resistance to the yuckiness that happens in our lives. Some things happen and are yucky. And I don't know how they got there for you. Um, most of the time, I don't know how they got there for me as far as the incidents that surrounded the yuckiness. And I would say 99% of the time, you don't even need to know. If you want to know, you can go searching, of course. As far as what's going on in, with your thoughts and feelings and beliefs that brought this yuckiness. But, but the yuckiness is not something to resist. Because you know what? You resist, persist, persist yes. right? So go ahead. Be sad, be disappointed, be angry, whatever. Go through it for, a, you know, 45 seconds. And then <laughs> take action. But where you're taking action is not necessarily out here, but in here. Mm -hmm. you got to start here. you got to decide, do I want ex to experience a woe is me life or a palindrome, wow, wow is me life. Mm -hmm. you got to decide, do I want to do it the hard way and push and shove, or do I want to do it the natural and organic way, mm -hmm. the, like I said a few weeks ago, and you mentioned, Heather, mm -hmm. the factory settings way, or whoever mentioned that just a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Decide per Ralph Waldo Emerson, where he said to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. And the circumstances that show up that, that are sucky in one way or another, you know, you start feeling like the world is telling you, you start feeling like the universe is telling you, well, that's, that's the way it is. You don't have to do that. Or when your parent says this or that. Or when your teacher says this or that. The way we were brought up and the, the negative ways we were brought up, that slows us down, that makes us 30 or more years later going, I can't do that. I can't do that. I don't have the, I'm not tall enough, whatever. That kind of stuff is what Ralph is talking about. So what is your, he's, he's mentioning mean, what is your, let me tell you a story. 
I want to tell you a story about a caterpillar. So a caterpillar is, you know, going his or her way, blah, 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 and hits a wall. Looks over there, the wall is going on forever. Looks this way, oh, the wall is must be a Chinese uh, <laughs> caterpillar because the wall is, is very long. And the caterpillar looks up and the wall is oh, way up there. So the caterpillar sits and thinks, well, how am I, I got to get around this. Um, I don't want to go back. Um, well, what's my choices? My choices is I can crawl up this thing like some Navy SEAL and push and pull and you know, and maybe even feel like Sisyphus and constantly going, going, or maybe something will come to me. So the caterpillar gets down off the, uh, you know, just kind of looked up, gets down, decides to uh, crawl up a nearby tree and just patiently wait till something comes to it. And lo and behold, <laughs> it had transformation. Mm -hmm. Turned into a butterfly, flew up, over, and beyond the wall. The idea of that is we transform by transcending. Mm -hmm. We transcend by transforming. And if we are patient and use our inner tools, we will butterfly our way out of, through, around any situation. In liminal space, if we decide to be patient, we allow that we use that as a strategy to self-emerge. The trick is when you're in that liminal space, when you're in that graced time, that teachable moment, the trick is to do these few things. Stop. Listen. And stop working on the solution. Stop working on the fix. What's the fix? What do I do now? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Around and around like a whirling dervish in your head. These decisions, these, these plans, these strategies. If I do this and do that, da, 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 da. if I can get him to do this and her to go over there, then this will happen and then, and then I'll get out of this. Stop that. Stop the hows and commit to the what. That is when, when you stop and listen, stop the, the thinking and the strategizing and the problem solving, that's when you commit to the what. And what comes out of that, what transforms you, because you're going backward, is when you remember who you are. Mm -hmm. When you get back to basics. There's a woman, a Berkeley psychotherapist and teacher of Jewish mysticism. Her name is Estelle Frankel. And she wrote, if I take the time to sit down, close my eyes, say a prayer, open myself to spirit, then my identity begins to expand. And I remember that I'm not just Estelle, the personality, that I'm a soul, that I'm an embodiment of the divine. And I move from what Jewish mystics say is small mind, and the Buddhists say this too, to big mind. Mm -hmm. And in that other state, the bonds of the self, the small identity that limits us and dictates who we think we are, it frees us. It frees us up. It's sort of like a zooming out, like you would do with a camera. But it's zooming out all the way to infinity all the way to eternity, beyond time, beyond space, all the way to eternity. And in that moment, she says, of deep meditation or prayer or any sort of spiritual practice, anything becomes possible because you are rising above the workings of time. You're allowing self, with the big S, to emerge. It's so simple, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really is so simple to bring that new you, which is an old you, so you're going backwards in a way to re-reveal the divinity in you because you forgot. Yeah. Because you're in this whirlwind of, oh, I don't like this situation, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to solve the problem mm -hmm. instead of allowing the universe to inform you and get in there with you mm -hmm. and work the how. 
the answer or treat may hide in so-and-so's books sometimes. This is just one little quick thing I want to mention about this. You know, you can read books, you can come here, you can take classes, you can read all kinds of, of books. Um, you can remember these phrases, thoughts are things, change your thinking, change your life, the universe has your back. Um, you could do the countdown method. Anybody, anybody know the countdown method from Mel Robbins? Mm -hmm. Mel Robbins is a, gr a great um, uh, inspirational thinker. She doesn't like to be called a motivational speaker because she thinks motivation is, is junk. Mm -hmm. um, but she has this countdown thing where she um, count that, counts down like, like at a rocket ship, five, four, three, two, one, and then she goes. She mm -hmm. doesn't allow herself to think. Mm -hmm. So if it's, she, she's having... She feels like she's having a diff difficult morning, doesn't want to get up, and she was, I've seen her describe a time period where that was happening a lot, and finally she was like, you know, I can't get myself motivated, and then she realized motivation is junk. Five, four, three, two, one, out of bed, go. No thinking. Ba -ba -da -ba, do the kids, and then get the kids to, to school, ba -ba -da -ba, go, go do whatever she needed to do during the day. And now she teaches that. That's her big thing. Or you can take the dynamic, bold action that Tony Robbins talks about, no relation. Or you can do affirmative prayer. But anything that you do like that, or that you read in these books that you're reading now, or that have been written in the last 50 to 100 years, that's all ancient wisdom mm -hmm. in new words. <laughs> so Jason and, and Heather and I were talking about that early in the week. It's, it, if, you, if you read the Upanishads, you read, if you read the scriptures... Um, correctly, let's yeah. say, um, and, and other ancient wisdom things, the Greeks, lots of great Greek stuff with this kind of inspiring knowledge. They're all saying the same thing all these books say. Even the countdown method, because obviously there wasn't space, that kind of uh, uh, rocket ships and stuff back then. And you know, an interesting thing, as I, as I write the several books I'm writing right now. Um, <laughs> it hits me every once in a while. I'll get to a chapter and I'll, and I'll write this stuff and I'll write it all out and I'll think, yeah, so what? <laughs> now it's in my way. I'm saying in my way, so there's probably a little, little goofiness in there, a little, a little um, for lack of a better phrase, intellect in there, logic in there, because that's the way I am. But then I read it and I go, well, so what? You could read that in whatever. And that so, sometimes slows me down, and other times I go, yeah, but somebody's going to read it the way I say it and get it, mm -hmm. versus reading it in the Upanishads or, or any Vedic philosophy or um, some you know, Greek philosopher. All ancient wisdom, all that comes from all those old cultures. They're all saying the same thing, that there is a vibration and energy that's always there to tap into, and we get to tap into it. And when we're in this liminal space, when we're in this area of, oh, I don't know what's going on, what do I do, why do I do, step back. As I said a few weeks ago, allow the factory settings to set in, to reboot, to refresh. And then we can move any story because they're all just stories mm -hmm. of woe is me to why was, why was me. Any story of indecision to decision, <laughs> loss of control to being back in control. Although you want to have a life of a little bit of not in control, that's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. It brings variety. So, um, Ernest Holmes to tells us there's a living presence within, and I recognize it as the one and only power in the universe and I unify with it, with it, it that is within each and every one of us. So stop and listen, the universe is there. The universe is waiting to do the hows. We just have to know the what. The strategy will come to us when we step backwards to go forwards mm -hmm. by re-realizing, re re-revealing, or revealing, if you felt like you've never done it before, that divinity that is within all of us. And in those liminal spaces where we are most teachable, we get back to basics and we transform into what we already are so that we know and we reunite to that which is within us 
that knows that we are powerful, capable, always a choice, open and ready, operating at the speed of the vine. The speed of the divine, but also at the speed of love. Mm -hmm. Loving life, loving life, mm -hmm. even backwards in heels. Mm -hmm. Thank you all.